Bonaire is a wonderful island full of polar opposites. In some areas, it's barren and bone dry. A few steps away, the ocean crashes against the rocky cliffs. And that's what happens when Sean gets too close. Scorpions hide themselves among the dusty underbrush, while land snails survive Bonaire's arid climate by drawing nutrients from the leaves of aloe vera and agave plants. There are uninhabited areas where you can hang out alone with the friendly neighborhood cacti. But then you'll have beaches full of scuba divers from all over the world. There will be abundant vegetation in some areas, and in other areas a lone survivor thrives at the edge of a gigantic salt evaporator complex. But what I liked most was, of course, all the different herbs. This agave plant is probably around 10, no, I'm going to say 15 to 20 years old. It has spent the last 15 to 20 years basically growing and saving up enough power to explode this stalk rising out of the middle. Soon after this stalk grows high enough and produces flowers, then this entire agave dies. That is the end of its reproduction cycle and then it's time for another agave to take its place. Because this flowering stalk is so high in the air it's easy for bats living on Bonaire to take flight at night and find these agave flowers and begin pollination. If you've ever drank tequila you can thank a bat like this one with pollen all over its face. The bats like this have helped agave survive for thousands of years. And here we have one of the greatest medicinal trees in the world growing in the parking lot of a hardware store on Bonaire. These trees will grow anywhere in this area of the world. This is the world famous neem tree, which has multiple medicinal powers. It is antibacterial, antiviral, antiparasitical, anti inflammatory, it's a natural insecticide. You know, it's just a good tree to have around. There are many studies on the net showing Neem's ability to inhibit replication of certain viruses. You can find many studies online about Neem being tested against different kinds of pathogens and the effects. There is no shortage of studies about the Neem tree. The Neem tree was named Tree of the 21st Century by the United Nations. Neem leaves appear to disrupt the reproduction cycle of mosquitoes. Very important. Nobody likes mosquitoes. But in this area of the world, you really don't want to take chances with mosquito bites. Mosquitoes are persona non grata on Bonaire. Billboards are put up in multiple locations on the island, warning of the dangers of mosquito-borne diseases. Dengue, chikungunya, and Zika sounds like a law firm from hell. Keep Bonaire safe and clean, the billboard pleads, courtesy of the Bonaire Public Health Department. I visited with an herbalist on the island of Bonaire for a few hours. You'll meet him in a minute. And while we were outside talking for a good part of the day, I received, I'm going to say, probably 100 to 125 mosquito bites. And later that day, I went into a store on the island, and I saw a bottle of mosquito repellent made right on the island of Bonaire, pesticide free, made with herbs grown on Bonaire. One of the herbs was neem, neem leaves. I inquired about the product and it turns out that the lady who makes the actual product worked in that store. I was able to meet her and talk with her about her wonderful product. Her name is Stephanie and here's a picture of her with yours truly. I brought a large bottle of this stuff back to the US with me. I let a few people try it. They said it was the best mosquito repellent that they've ever tried. It's also very soothing to the skin after you've been bitten a million times. Since I was a human pincushion, I opened the bottle right there and started applying it to my arms and legs. And I got to tell you, the itching stopped. Uh, Stephanie's Bonaire-born herbal creation came to the rescue. 
Stephanie told me that she's been perfecting this mosquito repellent for 10 years and that neem leaf was a critical component of it. I'm very happy to have met her and found this wonderful product that helped me so much. The only downside is I don't think she ships her product off the island of Bonaire. You can only get it if you go there. One of the absolute highlights of my visit to Bonaire was serendipitously discovering an herbalist who lives on Bonaire. I was traveling down the road when I looked over and saw this sign. I immediately turned around and drove down an out-of-the-way dirt road, and that's where I met Manuel Vargas. Manuel turned a property that basically looked like this into an herbal wonderland. He turned barren into beautiful. He has managed to grow and cultivate, I'm going to guess, around 200 different medicinal plants, trees, herbs, fungi, right here on his property. From Acerola cherry to Zisiphus, this is a medicinal herb lover's playground. And these plants, trees, shrubs, and fungi are carefully grown and cultivated in the middle of basically a desert. And this is all for the express purpose of helping the sick and then allowing visitors from all over the globe to stop by and spend some time with a man on an herbal mission. Manuel makes sure to let you know right away that herbs help, but they are not the total solution. Okay, you can see here different kinds of herbs, medicinal herbs. The herbs help. Help for the disease in the body, for the human beings, help. No solution, no complete solution, help. Manuel stresses the importance of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system in human health, and often talks about the need to eat foods which are vitamin and mineral rich. As you listen to Manuel talk and briskly move from plant to tree, to bush, to fungus, you experience the infectious passion, drive, and zeal Manuel has for the varying disciplines he's pursued for many years. We stopped at a large aloe vera plant, aloe barbadensis, and Manuel tells me about his experiences using aloe vera for people who have disorders of the eye, explaining that rubbing the aloe vera gel directly to the eye will help, and explains that the gel will not harm the eye, as he demonstrates by rubbing some of the aloe gel to the edge of his own eyelid. This kind of aloe vera, the point and is aloe vera barpadensis. The yellow mm. color in the point is very important. This aloe vera is very fundamental. I take this plant. At this moment, this gel, this crystal, mm -hmm. this crystal is hundred for hundred activity. Okay. At this moment, when this part is direct for your eyes here, direct is. Biotica, no antibiotica. The nature don't produce antibiotics. It's biotic. It's really mean one injection with biotic elements in my body inside. This next herb is pronounced by Manuel as calanchoy. I've heard it pronounced many different ways. Manuel calls it calanchoy. Manuel explains it can be used for skin disorders from mild to severe as he breaks a piece in sections and rubs it on his skin. Calanchoe really, you can eat it. This calanchoe really is fantastic anti-tumoral for all kinds of tumors. Direct the tumors and put it direct. Open and put. Very important, very important for leukemia cancers. Blood cancer. Against leukemia cancer. Okay. For the blood cancer. This tree, for example, uh, the name is neem tree. Neem tree, neem oil. Okay, this leaf. When you boil it, this leaf is very, very effective for psoriasis. Psoriasis mm. is antiviral, antivirus, antibacterial, is insecticide, is really is anti, anti, anti. <laughs> it's very, very effective. So anti-parasite, antiviral, antibacterial. You can use it as an insecticide in gardens. Grown without water. Grown without water. Without water. It's very, very important plant in your garden, always. In your life, always. In different countries, it's a sacred plant. Great. In Nim, Nim sacred plant in other countries. It's very important, really, for extract minerals and vitamins of the soil and put here uh, for your service. You eating these two, okay, and drinking. 
European green tea. Could you use it in salad? You can use it in salad. You can use it in salad, yeah. of course. Or another kinds of uses, for example, for insecticide. This is a natural insecticide. For example, the termites don't enter never in this tree. They hate it. Yeah, in the, in the <laughs> trunk. They skip never enter here, the termites. And there really is a remarkable variety to behold here. I spent almost four hours talking with Manuel, but I could have easily spent days here learning about his methods for helping the sick, the properties that he has observed, which the different herbs have. Manuel has constructed a twisty medicine trail through his property, and each corner turned will reward you with a brand new herbal treasure. I will say that Manuel was extraordinarily patient with me as I asked question after question, and he answered questions with a smile on his face. Uh, he just loves what he does. These generously sized plantain leaves are used by Manuel for inflammation, for acne, and to heal wounds in record time, and I will let him explain. Yes, oh, yes, this great plantain. Is plantain. Plantain I use is the more, more uh, disinflammation plant mm -hmm. for inflammation. I use it always this. Yes. Plantago for acne is perfect. Acne. It's perfect. As a tea or grind tea it up in? or direct application in tea. For cicatrization infection, it's direct too. It's very, very easy. Do you have infection, big infections, or what problems, it's direct this leaf. Yeah. After aloe vera, in one day, close. In one day. Uh, I have uh, patients with diabetes and with plantago and aloe vera is red one day. Wait, 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 wait. You give them you give them aloe vera mm -hmm. and plantain mm -hmm. for diabetes. Yeah, when is, you have wounds open, normal is in the in the here, yes in the left. Okay, open here. Okay, I put this and aloe vera to the, together and let one leaf over. Bandas is this part, and the next day is closed. So you put aloe vera juice on, and then you take this leaf, cap it. Yeah, the aloe vera is for cicatrization, antibacteria, and the more things. And it heals. And this is for inflammation. This is. And this is made out of plantain leaves. This was a gift from Manuel. He saw the one billion mosquito bites on my body and gave me this to apply to the worst of the worst. Now this salve is made out of two ingredients, plantain leaves, which are abundant in most of the United States, and certainly in Europe, and the paper nest of wasps or hornets. You just keep adding plantain leaves to the ground up paper nest until it reaches this dark green color. You can use a blender, and you want to put it in the fridge because it will mold. I applied this to the worst of the worst spots on my legs, and it did help using this plus Stephanie's neem leaf based mosquito formula helped me tremendously and all I know is I came back to the USA after being a human pincushion and I don't have dengue, zika, or chikungunya. As Manuel moves from shed to shed, table to table, section to section on his property, there seems to be an endless stream of knowledge that Manuel has accumulated regarding herb use his experimentation is extensive as he shows me mushrooms which are eating plastics that he purposefully puts into the mushroom to show how the plastics are broken down over time by these fungi. This kind, this kind of panestulin, Ganoderma, yeah. eating plastic. Eating plastic. It eats it. Eating plastic, you can see. Eating plastic. Okay, just this a very, very important eating plastic. Even plastic, big plastic. Did you did you stick the plastic in there or did it go you around it, it itself? It's direct. Even in natural conditions direct. Could you hold one more? One more. Okay, very good, thank you. Even plastic, you can see here, even plastic. Wow. Okay, I gotta get a picture of that. What kind of plastic? does it matter what kind of plastic? Will uh, it eat all plastic? Yeah, all kinds of plastic. A few yards away, Manuel shows me an area where he is exposing certain plants to red light in order to see how red light affects their growth. And on this table, Manuel has all of these different plants growing in water with different amounts of algae, fertilizers, different ingredients, different things he's come up with. 
All these things are under his watchful eye to see which combination will produce the best results. We move on to graviola, which I have mentioned before in my Jamaica, Mexico, Dominican Republic videos. The fruit of the graviola tree is called guanabana, and it tastes great. The seeds are ground up and swallowed. That's for parasites. The leaves are used for fevers and for other much more serious health issues. When you use the leaves, it may be the seeds of the fruit, but for sure the leaves of the graviola, you're going to be killing off beneficial bacteria in the gut. So if you ever decide to use this powerful medicinal herb, add fermented foods into your diet so you can repopulate your gut. If fermented foods turn you off for some reason, find the best prebiotics and probiotics possible. And for probiotics, you want at least 450 billion per daily packet. If you're taking 1 billion, 10 billion, 50 billion, these are just drops in the ocean. You need to get the big guns out. Fermented foods ideally are better, but if you don't like the fermented foods, you've, you've got to get some other type of probiotic into your body. This is Manuel's mimosa shrub. The mimosa shrub and tree, Albizia julibrisum, is the source of what traditional Chinese medicine practitioners call collective happiness bark or collective happiness peel. Because of mimosa bark's ability to impart a strong sense of well-being to the person who's using this bark or extract, this is a critical, helpful herb for many people undergoing heartache, heartbreak, emotional trauma, and bereavement. Does it work on 100% of people? No, no herb does. But luckily we have plenty of herbs that can help people in this regard. Now this tree is called the gumbo limbo tree. You'll see this in Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and this part of the world. When I was in Nicaragua, I found an enormous gumbo limbo tree and took a picture of it. It's sometimes called the tourist tree because the bark peels off like sunburned skin. And Manuel is telling me here about how in some parts of the world the solid bark is used for breast cancer and the thin peeling part of the bark is used for stomach upset. I was told the bark is antibacterial and is used as a blood cleanser, which can sometimes translate to an antiviral uh, or antibacterial action, ideally. The bark probably would be effective as a water extract for bites and stings, and Manuel has a number of these trees growing on his property. And the amount of botanicals here is it's just astounding considering that mainly one person is not only actively growing, cultivating, experimenting with all of these herbs and fungi and whatever else, but Manuel also takes time for tours like the one here and then helping the sick who travel to come see him. It's absolutely amazing. And this really is the solution. Do you make a tea out of it? Yeah, dry and tea must be direct. It has to be dried? You need dry, dry teas for after. You after. cannot use it fresh? No fresh. Dry. 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 How long does it take to dry? I wonder. Uh, maybe two weeks only. In this climate, two weeks only. Is papaya leaf. Papaya leaf. For dengue fever. For dengue fever or for the colon cancers. Colon cancer, for dengue cancer, fever. Dengue fever. Dried two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, for you. Okay, this produced in a special milk. You can see it now for the film. This special milk. Oh, yeah. Milk. This milk is very, very special. For example, this milk, okay, latex, okay, is antitoxin. After the scorpion beating or after the, the snake beating, you can put this antitoxin direct. And you just let it dry? Yeah. Can you use it for mosquito bites? <laughs> this one, no, for mosquitoes, another thing. Okay. This is more effective. It's for snakes, for scorpions, for scorpions. For this plant, for example, this is a callaloo. It's edible. Uh, this is really is for salad. Okay. This is the natural lettuce too. Natural lettuce. Okay. Yeah, very important, these flowers. Oh. Okay. These red flowers, I have more samples for here. This is family, the 
with ananas coming the, of pineapple, noise pineapple. This is the flower, the red flowers. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is very important when the person has urine rotations. Put this leaf, this leaf in hot water and drink it. When the person has urine retentions. Urine retention. Urine retention. Too much uh, edema, too much fluid. Too much fluid. Cannot. You need, you need elimination. Uh, big okay. ankles, like the ankles get swollen. Correct, it is the ankles, big ankles, but you need elimination. Urine, urine. It's mineral acid activities for elimination. Urine. Urine. Drinking and locus, go, go for urine elimination. You release the fluids. Correct. Normal, when you have accumulation, here is the problem. Here is the problem. This accumulation and reduce different wounds. And this is practice. Does it help with the lymphatic system? Help, help for lymphatic system. Okay. Uh, yucca plant, the yucca plant produces the white flowers. You always you can see this kind of plant, the yucca plant. Mm -hmm. Yucca plant or yucca plant in English. The yucca plant produces the small flowers, the white flowers. White flowers. You need eat these flowers, eat these flowers. Really fantastic salad. Uh, similar for the lettuce. Thing. This common plant, Giffenbach, yes, common plant in, in all kinds, all kinds of the house. This is the, the room, room plant always. This is very, very poison, very poison. The more poison plant in the world, this. What's the name of this then? Diffenbachia. Diffenbachia is common plant. Diffenbachia. Diffenbachia. Diffenbachia really, uh, the problem is, is in the office. Always you can see this plant in the office. Yeah. Inside. Right, right. Okay, the office has air condition too. After the one year you bred the plant too, you are very, very tired and with stress, of course, precancerous conditions. Because this plant, this plant is a very nice plant outside. Inside is a big problem. In the Amazonas River, the Indians use his leaf and put in the rivers. And the fishes come without oxygen. Without oxygen. Okay. After the one year breath this plant, I <coughs> in my office, okay, produce the same thing. How it's many leaves would you throw in the river to, to make the fish oh, come up? Maybe what this part, this part. You throw up the river and the fish an armful. Come. Yeah. And it, it put it, in it, the river, uh, uh, maybe one kilometer more, put here in the river, and the water go, go, go. Here is the person for take the fish. And it interferes with the fish's ability to get oxygen out of the water. They, they suffocate, basically. Yeah, suffocate, basically. Now, this plant is important to Manuel. He made sure to point it out to me on three different occasions while I was recording. It's a mucilage, and mucilaginous herbs are very important. It contains antioxidants, which I talked about in my Roybos video. The fresh leaves are a good source of vitamin C, which is very important for the adrenals and cardiovascular system. Parts of the plant are used for dysentery, which means there's a very good chance it has decent antibacterial effects. This plant comes with a laundry list of uses. There are many studies about this plant which you can look up on the net. Oh, that's, it catches the rainwater. Yeah, it's the rainwater. I feel it's difficult for rainwater. Oh, this is beautiful. How long did it take you to get these? See? You had to look for a long time to find yeah, these. Yeah, yeah, the coral alphabet. <laughs> look at that. This not only a common plant. Okay, this not only is for really uh, for when your stomach is closed. No need direct one spoon is for open your stomach. Okay. This medicine I have for sampling is this. this. It's another kind of basilicum. This basilicum is the, the family, the Thai basilicum. It really is another kind. This is perfect. The person use it when they have a stress, put the person here. This. Okay. Uh, here's for, for the pain. Maybe for the heat pain. In one moment, your aspiration is... is 10 seconds, no more pains. I put here, let here the leaf. And then you breathe that one. 
Yeah, this is a silicon plant. It's a basic plant. Easy. Basic, basic plant. The silicon. For you now, it's... A field day with this hand. What if they don't come over? Oh. I don't think they like me. No, no, no. No, they eat them. Additional, in this moment you can feel eating, eating, eating in one moment. It Maybe they know I'm American. Cells. Yeah, yeah, they're eating, eating dead cells. Oh. Uh huh. Quiet in one moment. Yeah, eating. <laughs> the dead cells. Okay, this is very important is communication. You can feel in one moment, pick, 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 eating, eating, eating. This is the interchange, the electromagnetic system from the one life organism with you. And this interchange is very important for recuperation in disease. What if you jumped in here? Would they eat all the dead skin off your body? It? Not really. <laughs> wow, look at them go now. I think the word's getting out. And guys, it just keeps going. It's just, it is herb after herb, tree after tree, fish after fish, fungi, shrubs, cacti of all kinds. The variety is staggering, especially considering he took a patch of scrubland and transformed it into what you see here. His experimentations of all kinds. He makes his own fertilizer. He makes his own insecticide. It's just astounding. I'm so grateful that I saw that sign at the side of the road. If my head had been turned for just a second, I would have totally missed it. Honestly, this video could be almost, well, almost four hours long. That's how long I recorded all of this. Manuel kept talking, I kept recording, and either he was going to stop or my battery was going to die and Manuel won. My battery died, he kept talking, and I'm just so grateful that he was kind enough to walk me through his herbal wonderland with no time restrictions. It was such a great experience. I returned the next day with two gifts, a bottle of oil of oregano and a bottle of chaga mushroom extract. This was a new experience for Manuel. He'd never tried these before. Here he is taste testing them. He really liked the chaga, and he carefully observed the sensation of the oil of oregano moving through his body after he took a few drops. I've never seen anybody do that before. There was a nice lady from the United Kingdom who stopped by Manuel's the day I dropped off his gifts, and she took a picture of us. I keep this picture in my office. Every once in a while, I look over, and I wonder how he is doing on that island so far away. It's a picture that serves as an inspiration and a powerful reminder of medical herbalism on Bonaire. Thank you for watching.